In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are drawn together as God's family from Whitkirk, Colton, and beyond to offer praise and thanksgiving, to ask the forgiveness of our sins, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, that through the Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to God's service. Very warm welcome to our worship this morning. It's good to have you with us. One or two uh, notices just from last week to reiterate um, that the survey, which very short survey we put out uh, in the short term to help us discern what will be the best pattern of services going forward in September, that closes tomorrow. So if you haven't filled it in, please do so and encourage others to do so as well. And secondly, uh, just a reminder about volunteers for, uh, to act as stewards, as sides people. Uh, someone's uh, asked during the week, um, why not assume our existing use of uh, a list of sides people are sufficient? Well, I didn't want to make any assumptions uh, about those who wish to offer themselves at this time. So if you'd be interested in being a steward when we come back into church to make sure we can come in and out safely, then to, do please be in touch. Thank you to all those who've uh, both volunteered and also completed uh, our survey. Just a couple of other things, a notice from St Richard's Food Bank in Seacroft, which we have supported over the last few months. Uh, just a request from them, they're running a bit short on funds at the moment, so if you have uh, the means to donate to them, please do so. Uh, information about how to donate will be is on the website and will be on our e-newsletter. Uh, do be generous if you can. And then lastly, uh, Jean Clemenson, uh, a much-loved member of our church family, as uh, many of you, all of you probably by now know, uh, died last week. And so uh, we have her funeral next week, well, this week rather, on uh, Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. Now, the limitations for numbers are still there. There are 10 people can come to that. But the evening before, uh, we shall uh, receive her coffin into church and her family have said that that's kind of a time for the church family to come and remember her. So if 10 people want to come uh, to that and, and join me inside for some short prayers as we welcome and receive Jean's coffin into church, you're very welcome. And then I'll leave church open for an hour uh, from 4.30 to 5.30 on Monday evening if any of you would like to come along and just pay your respects then. Obviously, we'll have to manage the... Uh, in, ins and outs as necessary, but do feel able to come along if you'd like to uh, say farewell to Jean here uh, in church then. So we begin our worship with the first of our hymns, Lift High the Cross.
penitence for our sins, let us turn to Christ that he may fill us with his new life. Lord Jesus, you came that we might learn from you and find rest for our souls. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have abundant life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came that you might set us free. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, alleluia, let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Through him give thanks to God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak to the glory of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Giles loves it when I say, can I ask you something? He knows that a question is coming, something that perhaps has been playing on my mind for a week or so, or something that just needs to be sorted. The truth is, his heart sinks, but he knows I love a question. It's the only way to get to know anything, and I have a saying. Ask a question and look stupid for five minutes. Never ask a question and look stupid for a lifetime. Life, as we know, is all about questions. The mundane and the simple, and of course, the big stuff. The why, the who, the what, the when and the where questions. Being at home after my operation, I have to confess, I have spent a lot of time watching the dreaded daytime television. Mainly quiz shows. Somehow justified in my viewing, it's helped with the healing process, and it helps with general knowledge. I found out in only a few weeks that there is certainly only so much daytime television anyone can stomach, and there are certainly more questions than answers. This morning's Gospel reading poses Peter a great question. Jesus, with the disciples, wants to know, Who do they say I am? Asking someone else what their opinion of you is can be a risky business. You may not always get the answer you want or deserve. Jesus, in this case, is not interested in what the wider community think about him. He wants to know what his closest disciples think about him. Peter replies with all certainty, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And this is just what Jesus wanted to hear. Thinking back throughout your life, you will have been told or discovered for yourself the answer to that question. Who is Jesus? What's your earliest memory of being told who he was? Was it by a parent, a teacher or at Sunday school? Perhaps the answer came later in life. Perhaps yet you are still to discover truly who Jesus is. Naturally, the image of you, you will have of Jesus will have changed as you have changed. Your life and experiences will hopefully have reinforced who he is and how you regard Jesus in your life. And more importantly, who you say he is to other people. From my experience, one thing that remains when all seems lost and we are in the depths of despair that Jesus is the constant. In the Gospel reading, Peter and the other disciples recognise Jesus as a constant in their lives, 
and as a result, Peter declaring Jesus as Lord was re rewarded with being known as the rock, the foundation on which the new church shall be built. Could you be sure if Jesus were to ask you himself, who do you say I am? Jesus' question isn't so much about getting the right answer as it is about witnessing and testifying to God's life, love and presence in our lives and the world. It is less about our intellect and more about our heart. It is grounded in love and more grounded in love more than understanding. It moves us from simply knowing about Jesus to knowing him. As we move towards coming back together as a community of faith, who declares together that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. We are again given the opportunity to explore this and other questions at Faithbook. Faithbook this year, for obvious reasons, will be different. Online access for most things has become the norm, and of course, St Mary's is no different. Faithbook is for everyone, and certainly one size does not fit all. It is for those who have been worshipping at St Mary's for many years, all the way down to those who have yet to declare who they think Jesus is. It provides a challenging but safe place for people to chat and to ask questions to help us explore our faith with each other. There is nothing safe about the question that Jesus poses. How could there be? There is nothing safe about Jesus or the life to which he calls us. Jesus' life and presence among us call into question everything about our own lives, our world, the status quo, and the business as usual. That's why we ought not to answer this question too quickly, too glibly, or with much certainty. It's not a question to be figured out as much as it is a question to be lived. So can I just ask you something? Who do you say Jesus is? Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear Lord, we come before you today, apart yet together, in the sure and certain knowledge that you hear our prayers, reassure us when we doubt, and are an ever constant in our lives. Let us pray. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray at this time for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. We ask, Lord, that you support and guide Mel Tatez, Archbishop of Southeast Asia and Bishop of Sabah, as he leads all who work and worship there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocese, we pray for all military establishments, especially Carlton Barracks, the military installation in Leeds, housing Army, Royal Navy and Royal Marines Reserve Units, Officer Training Regiment and Army Cadet Force. All civilian staff who assist military personnel, all medical staff caring for their physical and mental needs and for the chaplains offering pastoral care and supporting their religious rights and needs. 
we give thanks for and pray for the Royal British Legion, the charity providing financial, social and emotional support to those no longer in active service and all veterans of the British Armed Forces, their families and dependents. We hold in our prayers all those serving at home and abroad in areas of conflict. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Give them courage to face the perils that beset them and help them to know that nothing can separate them from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. We hold in our prayers the residents of Selby Road. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, guide and bless Elizabeth our Queen and all in authority under her. We pray for those who bear the responsibility for leading her at this time of COVID-19. Grant them wisdom and clarity of thought in their communications with each other and with the public. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for Giles as he skillfully plays for us when we sing your praises in our own homes. And we give thanks for those involved in making private prayer available on Saturday afternoons in church for members of our congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, Though we walk in the midst of trouble, your steadfast love promises healing and wholeness to those who are in trouble or sick in mind, body or spirit. We hold before you George Brown, Ginny Camponi, Tom Heafy, Jennifer Mode, Mike Jackson, Lynn Pickersgill, Christine Oates, and Margaret Tomlinson, and any who may be suffering from coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, your glory is revealed in your death and resurrection. We entrust to you all who have recently died, remembering especially Brian Thornhill and Jean Clemenson, and any who have succumbed to COVID-19. And we hold before you Ronnie Butterworth, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Give comfort, Lord, to those who mourn and long for what cannot be. Grant to them the faith to trust in your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. United with the church across the world, let us pray with confidence, using the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, transform us by your love, that we may know and do your will, that we may live and work to your praise and glory. Through Christ, the King of glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. We thank you, O God, for you are gracious. You have loved us from the beginning of time, and you remember us in times of trouble and of joy. Your, Your mercy endures forever. We thank you, O God, for you came to us in Jesus Christ, who has redeemed the world and saves us from our sins. Your mercy endures forever. We thank you, O God, for you have sent your Holy Spirit, who comforts us and leads us into all truth. Your mercy endures forever. Amen. Dear friends, seek for peace. Peace in your heart, peace in your spirit, peace in your mind, peace in your home. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank mm -hmm. you.